community, a technical, you can like if there's any announcement, just I'll give you ten seconds to if there isn't, there will be a silent. If there is there, somebody will just come in. Okay. So that means uh, there is no announcement. Everything is going good. I think we are very happy about the activities, at least then, you know, of course, there's always more to do, but I think people are taking it in their own hands to try to help each other as well as ask questions. And hopefully there is no one stuck, but I will give the very first uh, part to people who are experiencing whatever challenge. Could be internet challenge, you know, it could be power challenge, just so that people are aware you know, where everyone is. So is there any challenge that you're facing um, that is, it can be infrastructural, it can be conceptual skill-wise or anything? Just, yeah, Biniam. Okay, good morning. Uh, morning. My challenge is actually regarding the business objective. Uh, I'm not sure if we are supposed to run uh, a random exploratory analysis or uh, is there a, a given uh, objective for the whole project i mean yeah great um so i'm just opening um so as you're rightly saying that we actually much more giving you task more than more than a business objective, right? Um, but it just to summarize, and I would definitely add that, like um, I, will, I will update, at least in the overview, what is actually also the, the objective of the analysis more than just uh, what is. So in the last part, I think if I'm not mistaken, in the report writing, uh, it asks like what you noticed, right? What you observed for during the analysis. So to produce a report in the form of medium block or um, so the task is, is basically says, so the insights, so it's, it's about like your address, you're addressing about people who might want to understand on the topics of the data. So insights that you manage to extract and the data is on economic hardship in Africa. And then also we have a particular uh, elements like countries specifics so it is about whether i think you know it's not exactly as you said it's not uh, clearly stated what kind of insight we are looking for as for example a client and you can take it to assume that the data that we extract is because we understand we want to know what is is there economic hardship the global uh, it's a, an exploratory analysis in a sense is the global condition, you know, just the wars in, in Ukraine and Russia, which means also into oil. I mean, the, the data is also coming from oil and fuel and stuff, as you could see it, uh, as well as also just there is, you know, this basic staple foods like um, grains not being, you know, they are being the global uh, bread basket. So is there, is that thing being felt in Africa? So it is about understanding or finding insight in that element. So you can think of the objective is, what is the global condition? How is how is it changing? What are people's feeling on that, uh, on the economic hardship? And if is it, is it also in the data, does it relate to the a particular event, like for example, the, the war in Ukraine? So that, that is a business objective. I would clearly state that also in the document. But hopefully that addresses your Question, Binim? Yeah, to my understanding, basically, it is a, a sentiment analysis of the, the current economic hardships yeah. that uh, that are probably connected to the Ukraine war and uh, other uh, factors. Am I right? Exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. And we have a number of hands. I'm just going to go through the list. So, Michael. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, first, I was having some problem about the package installation. Uh, 
I was I was I was installing the the package on my VS Code, even though I didn't integrate my uh, Anaconda into my VS Code or into my terminal. I was installing the pandas package and the matlab uh, mat the plotting package. But when I tried to run my uh, cleaning and uh, extracting the data Python file, it was reporting that the module the module was not found. So uh, I spent some time to uh, fix that error, and I go to the Slack community to ask it, to ask about it, and I saw that the, the, there were there were uh, people to help me, and then I tried to fix uh, to fix it in that way, and then I got another way to go through my Anaconda terminal and to run the files, and then I was able to do that. I was able to extract the file. I was able to to understand about the data. And after finishing that, after the merging something like that, after testing, and when I see about the today's task, about the workflow, I was somehow confused about it. And I hope I will I will I will have a clear image about it today. Yeah, that was the problem that I was having yesterday. Thank you. Great, awesome. I mean, thanks for detailing that. Hopefully, people learn from it in terms of like you know you don't have to get stuck, and the community is there to help. So. Uh, that's wonderful. Okay, so we have Stacy. Uh, uh, you are a bit far, Stacy. You get closer. Hello. Hello. Okay, we can hear, but it's just a bit far. Okay. Uh, I'm so sorry. It was, uh, okay. You can continue. It's okay. It's very, it's very hard because in the background there is something that is much more dominant than your, your voice. And maybe when the background stops, like the pounding, that you can uh, raise again the hand. Okay. Uh, That's okay. Okay. Now, now, now you are much louder. Okay. You can. You may try it now. Oh, okay. So, um, I was I was saying that as I was submitting my assignment, I had I have I am facing a lot of technical issues because it was telling me as well as ever, but I asked on the Slack and I was assisted, so that really helped. Wonderful. That's good to hear. So now you don't the issue is solved, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I submitted even if I turned it a little bit later. At least I still submitted my work. Wonderful. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Correda. Just while we're waiting for people to unmute, Yavabel, it'd be great to hear how people are feeling as well. Yes. Yeah. Correda. Okay. So yeah, as Arun mentioned, I think that's a very important thing. You could also just let us know what is your feeling, uh, how did you find it, you know, reflection. And so now we got into the normal one. So first I wanted to hear also if there are any challenges, any blockers uh, in general uh, related. Okay, okay. Just, uh, you could also type for it up. So now let's just get into the call, but I, I think we really like to hear how are Hello? you feeling? Hello, Coretta. We can hear you now. Hello. We can hear Am you. I audible now? Yes. Yes, we, we could hear you, Coretta. Okay. So, yeah, just uh, let us know how you feel. If you have any challenge, any yeah, problem. thanks. You so I run into a couple of issues while working on the tasks. So the tasks for the one and day two yesterday. So and the major blocker that I've run into is 
Okay. So the major blocker is on the unit testing. So I've recently unit test for the force bug that I've that I have fixed the the force file that I've fixed the bug on, which is the extract data frame file. So but on trying to integrate the unit test into the CI the CI pipeline on Travis. So they are build errors. So and the build error is because of the sample data. So there's a need to upload the sample data on GitHub whereby the testing environment remotely can interact with the sample data and make and run the necessary code on top of the file. So that's the major blocker. So it's uh, basically to integrate and to deploy the sample data on top of GitHub. So th that is the major blocker that I'm having. So around CI testing and deploying large files onto GitHub. Yeah, so I'm here to solve that. So um, looking forward to to helpful comments or resources here. Great, definitely. Yeah, the tutorials will be there as well. So you just say Travis, but we are using or we are asking GitHub Actions. So maybe just in case there is some confusion, we will be there will be a tutorial as well tomorrow. But before that, also you can ask, and the tutorials can help. It's you would set up CI on GitHub Actions using GitHub Actions, um, but great. Yeah, so, so I didn't get that. Uh, so you saved Travis for CI. Yes, yeah, CI testing, it's continuous but, integration. Yeah, but we are gonna we gonna use GitHub Actions. We save GitHub Actions. Okay, GitHub Actions. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. So, okay, cool. Um, okay, so as I said, just let us know also how you feel. And every, like, um, blockers challenge as well as also wins. That means things that you manage to do. And, um, yeah. So, um, we have Matilda. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Matilda. Okay, so I have been facing a lot of challenge, a lot of technical issues yesterday, especially while trying to perform my task one. I was repeatedly trying to commit my work, but it's all in vain. I tried, uh, I completed, actually completed my code, the whole of it for the extract mm -hmm. files and for the other file as well, but I can't commit it. I have sought for I have sought for counsel from the tutors and a few of my teammates in the chat box, in the chat group, but it's all in vain. I don't know what to do. Uh, did you ask the question in Slack? Yes, yes, I asked the question. I have I asked some questions in Slack, but it's not in the public domains. I just... Uh, you should you should ask in the public domain so that people can have you so right now okay so mm -hmm. what is your question uh, like just in so that we can pair you as well here whatever may help uh, so um, what, what is just the question like the particular issue that you have my particular issue is that i'm unable to commit to commit okay. my codes in in my vs code okay so yeah. who would like to, I mean, who's kind of more familiar with GitHub? Otherwise we can assign a tutor, but it would be nice just if someone also from the uh, team here, if you okay, maybe. are able. Yeah, uh, one can. more, I can do it. Okay, so Matilda and Michael, just mm -hmm. get along and try to fix it. And if you, if you do have more issue, please let us know. And in particular, uh, Musa and JB can reach to them. Um, yeah, so hopefully your issue will be solved. Again, my way of doing is just like, don't pass the midday without solving mm -hmm. it, right? Just okay. really Thank get you. along. Great, thanks Michael yeah. for volunteering. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Also Martin, 
you know, you, can, you guys can get together. Wonderful. Um, okay, Margaret. Um, hi, everyone. So how I particularly feel about this task is it's a very interesting challenge in a way that it encompasses different fields and some of it is kind of new and this challenge just pushes you to go and learn new things new libraries new just different applications and yeah it's a bit tough but interesting um yeah Right. I mean, it is a little bit, of course, overwhelming. And as as time goes on, the tasks will overlap, and also just the tutorials may come a bit late. But that's why it's kind of planning is essential, um, and also asking for help. You know, somebody's. I mean, what we are, what you should know is that probably somebody else has already is good at that, familiar with that. So, but yeah. Good to hear that um, you find the uh, challenge interesting and things are going well. Uh, Brooke? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, yesterday was uh, a tough day. Uh, I have tried to complete uh, given tasks on time and uh, I did submit all the tasks on time, uh, especially task, uh, the first uh, task one is a bit uh, time consuming task. Uh, which require uh, extended time to fix the box and uh, implement the functions. And the major challenge that uh, I faced yesterday was uh, power outage. Even on that, uh, I tried to manage the, and uh, submit the tasks. Uh, even though also I did not get enough sleep, uh, it was uh, submitted. And uh, on the case of uh, unit testing, I share Coreda issue, and I hope we will be uh, familiar uh, on how we can manage the unit testing. Thank you. Great. Yeah, it is. It's in a, a lot of work. That good that you you are grinding. Uh, Nugist. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, actually, mine is some, somehow a suggestion. Uh, yesterday, I was having an internet connection problem, so I was not able to attend the stand-up session. So uh, today, I, I was actually hearing the uh, YouTube. So. It, it was really helping. So if you can really consider it, like maybe if you can upload the video yesterday, like on the day the session is mm. given. Great. Uh, Arun, do you have? Yeah, <clears throat> no, we're, we're going to do better on that. It took us a little while. We were trying to do something a little bit fancier. Like but, it, it will uh, help us a lot. So um, I suffered a bit. Of, uh, no, apologies on it being slightly delayed on our side, but we, our goal is to get them up within, um, I'm going to say two hours, but uh, let's say for now, this week in the two hour time frame. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Great. Great. Awesome. Other than that, is everything going well in terms of the work? Yeah, it's really very interesting task. I mean, uh, I'm not familiar with the GitHub, but it's nice thing to know like it's it's very nice it's really <laughs> challenging but yeah it's a very good task thank you great thanks um so we need more new hands as well i mean so i just see design gone and i'm seeing that some other new people are coming just keep up like if you are not speaking make sure that you are speaking I mean, I I would otherwise start calling names randomly, but it would be nice just new names also coming, right? So, uh, design. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, design. Uh, yesterday, uh, on the morning, I was starting to uh, settle my environment, 
I use Windows 10, Windows 10 built-in uh, Linux. I was familiar with that, for, especially for GitHub. Uh, when I try to use uh, Windows command for GitHub, it was challenging for me. So uh, it, it was a mess to change my working directory to the uh, Linux one. Uh, when I do that, uh, when I uh, set that, uh, the other challenge comes was uh, the Anaconda uh, default directory was not able to open to my uh, Linux directory. So that it, it was a mess to uh, uh, complete my code on Anaconda with a different folder. Then I copy the file to my uh, Linux folder which uh, mostly I miss my commits when I uh, make changes on my code. So uh, to, uh, today uh, on the morning, I was completely setting my environment, my Anaconda environment to uh, uh, Ubuntu so that it was working. And uh, after completing my uh, setup, the technical was uh, very good. Uh, I was comfortable with that. The other thing what I faced was um, when I try to push my changes on my code, uh, the, there was uh, an error which pops up on my command uh, related to large file detected. Due to that, I, I almost all miss my commits, but for the deadline, I submit my uh, work uh, on time in a hard way. So my still my challenges. Uh, I try to use uh, some Slack informations from tutors and it didn't uh, help me to fix this large file detection errors yeah. and I'm still fighting with it. A very simple, it's called, there is git ignore. You can actually just add that in the git ignore, just the whole data folder and you don't have to uh, commit or anything. Another way, don't add it. So you can actually just say git, git remove um, data, right? By just copying the data first, then you can git remove. So I would say it shouldn't be at all a problem. Just don't include it in your git commits. You see it once an error, just don't do it. Like, and so there are the easiest is just to add a dot git ignore in the root directory, and then you will not have that issue anymore. So if there is a persistent issue, again, you know, you should be hopefully that someone will help you or at least you will find help or just ask it we, i will i will take a look at that also just if there are new questions regarding that we should address it once and for all just we can get even in a session that shouldn't be uh, okay thank you okay, and how are you the, feeling it's fine. So how are you feeling? i'm very very interested okay good okay Fasa. Yeah, uh, thank you. Just to add uh, on uh, the previous comment you just uh, commented, I, 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 I also had a problem with the large file uh, error. And I did, uh, the, I did add the, report, the folder named data to the git ignore file, but I, maybe I did something wrong, it didn't work. So I basically just did everything from scratch. I forked uh, the repository from Linux. I cloned it again, and I made a copy. Uh, and the thing I did was, I didn't uh, git init. I didn't initialize the git on my copy. I was working everything on the copy, and then uh, I extract. I, I did everything on that copy. I extracted the JSON file. I was doing everything, and on the original clone. I was just copying the code I edited from the copied folder in order to uh, block the uh, error that is telling me I have large file. I don't know why the uh, git ignore didn't work for me. Maybe there's something I did one time that is constant. I don't know, but uh, I uh, I kind of solved my problem like that. Just to add on the thing you just said. Uh, but my real question it was about the unit test. I mean, some of us may be new to this uh, unit testing. I've never done a. Uh, I've done testings, but I've never done a formal test, as in uh, testing using classes or. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what what 
to say i don't i, I really don't know how to make a unit test i tested my course before but not like using uh, c sharp codes or classes or something and the thing i wanted to ask was what are we supposed to do on that testing uh, uh, class that was provided as test uh, uh, I mean, because no, I asked this question on, yeah, I asked it on Slack. Some people gave me uh, ideas, and I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do what they told me. But if somebody can just briefly, like one minute or two minutes, explanation about what unit task is, what the outcomes are, and what basically uh, are we using right now to test our code units. Okay. Thank you. Musa. I guess that was okay. Musa, are you are you available to just give a very quick uh, um, on unit testing? Um like oh, so did you quite get this question if you can repeat it? Just, just a simple demonstration, what Eric expected, because they haven't done uh, any unit testing. So it's basically okay. how unit tests run. Just if you could arrange a session. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm gonna continue with uh, yesterday's session um, at, in the morning session because I didn't quite finish. Uh, yeah. But after that, I will have time to take them through. Okay, great. Yeah, okay. But, but in terms of for for the Git element, as well as also a quick one, um, just yeah. some discussion, we can, or just after this, we can have, uh, whoever has this Git large commit, whatever thing, we can yeah. just get in a, in a call, like I will be there. Um, so we yeah, can solve. So so we actually, uh, last night, um, uh, one of the students was asking about it. So we, there's actually a thread where I was helping him through the process. I think uh, if I'll just try to find that thread and, and yes. share it widely, and then if they can go through the steps that we're going, I think it was Michael or someone, I don't quite remember. But if they can try that and it still fails, then we will go on, go on a call. But yeah, we did we did that uh, solve, solve that for someone else last night. Yeah. Awesome. That's really yeah. Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, I think it should just some some things. I mean, unit test definitely you have to grapple with it, understand what it is, just read. Um, it's supposed to be there, I'm sure, a number of sites. I mean, if, I, if it's not already even in the reference, I'm just going to look. Um, so maybe it's not explicitly written on unit test reference. I will share some references, which I think might help. And those hopefully will help. It is like any other thing. It's just that you can run it like in, in, in Python, you can actually just, if you have it in the test folder, you can just actually say PyTest, and then it should just run whatever is there and then report. Ultimately, what you want to see is that, okay, the unit test, you designed it such that it tests after developing something, you want to see if the, your previous things that you told or they should work, will work. For example, if it is a data, like if it's a function that adds something that it actually, whenever you give it one plus one, it returns two, right? And so usually you, you, do, you do it using assert or something. And more complex functions, you can test them exactly with com more complex uh, thing. But ultimately, you run PyTest, it basically, it, it, just, it runs through the tests what is designed and then it just says like, okay, no error, which basically tells you like your new change doesn't break the your code, great. And that will help especially in the continuous integration because as we, when you integrate, it will automatically run probably your test. And if there is a test because multiple people are collaborating, if there is, you know, some, somebody's commit is breaking it, then it says, oh, it's, you know, your unit test is not passed. So something very simple like that, but of course, whenever I say it is easy, uh, we'll share some references and also there will be a tutorial. I just wanted to jump in really quickly here. On the employer side, this is one of the biggest uh, gaps that most, many of our trainees face. So it's not just a make work exercise, but this is often tested in coding challenges that uh, people face when they go for interviews. So this is the start. Yeah. We have 12 more weeks to work on this, but it's extremely important. True. Yeah. So it, it is yeah, grappling with it, understanding. I think the question you ask now is, uh, is good. Like in a way, like what are, you know, it's always just questions like that are useful. Like, okay, if you haven't grasped your head around it, just asking it until you really grasp it, it's good. So yeah, 
hopefully it shifts a little yeah. bit light even if not much yeah, yeah thank so, you good. thank you very much I, I think i kind of get the gist of it thank you very much for coming thank yeah. you and I, I hope you uh, share us the resources you just i will share about. references I yeah. Share yeah thank you thank you very yes. much yeah nice okay jonas johannes hello hello good morning good morning uh, I don't have questions. I just want to share my experience. Yeah. Yesterday was uh, actually a little bit uh, tough for me. I did all the tasks and uh, I mean, uh, do all the changes, all the commits in the export branch. And uh, finally, I try to merge them. But when I do that, it kind of uh, copy content of the main into back and the, the the changes i made it shows the changes i made it just shows me that i made set three commits but the files was gone so i asked it on the slack group people helped me and uh, actually i'm very thankful and then finally i approached the tutor uh, db has helped me a lot and uh, finally uh, did that it was very challenging actually uh, but i was uh, a little bit Date for the submission. Anyway, I have to do that. Uh, uh, did that, and now I'm currently uh, doing on uh, unit testing. And uh, about that, uh, people have already raised that, uh, and uh, the, I hope we'll give you some tutorial on that. And that's it. Uh, thank you. Great. Thank you. So you are happy. How's your feeling? Or yeah, are... I'm kind of happy. Yesterday I was a little bit sad because uh, I just thought about, oh, now everything is gone. I just lost it. But I uh, worked hard. I just I sleep actually late, uh, did everything. And uh, finally, yes, I am really happy right now. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, great, thanks. Didier? Yeah, thanks. Uh... Me too, yesterday was a little bit hard for me. Because, uh, you know, uh, Monday was super easy, I would say. <laughs> and uh, the, the programming tasks uh, took me a long time to complete. Yeah, that's, that's where I struggled. Uh, but, yeah, eventually I, uh, I did it. And, yeah, I'm glad I did it. And... Uh, I'm looking forward to like completing today's task and maybe one tip I can share that I tried and really helped me uh, uh, pre uh, before I had used uh, GitHub issues but never used the project and so yesterday I tried uh, GitHub project and it really helped me to organize my work and I, I found it uh, helpful so maybe i would encourage other trainers here to try that if they haven't yeah thanks great um i'm just sharing some references and also i put uh, these references in in the document itself under pi testing Python testing, so you could also just because I know this three uh, the teacher side uh, guide, the machine learning um, mastery and real Python are really a good places anytime. So this is just a general. Also, they have multiple concepts um, in every Python, and they are very deep. That means just they start gentle and and they go really to the detail. Especially real Python, if you need to. You know, if you have an idea in Python you want to learn, you can go to real Python and the real Python have most of the time a very, I would say, industry standard uh, level of detail uh, that you that you can get. And I added that also um, the three references I sent in the Python testing in the document. Okay. Uh, Meron. Okay, hello. Can you hello. hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? We do hear you, Meron. Do you okay. hear us? Yeah. Okay, so, so far the training has been really good. And yesterday for me was a bit overwhelming as we had a lot of tasks to complete and submit. Uh, especially I had difficulties on points that everybody kind of mentioned. It would be re repeating. Uh, regarding the bug fix, I had a bit challenge there. Mostly it was pushing uh, to the git, uh, pushing my commits. Uh, they mentioned before uh, large files could not be pushed. I have tried most solutions from online and also suggested on the Slack. Uh, you also mentioned putting it in the git ignore, so I'm trying that, but still, I, it hasn't worked for me. I'll keep trying though. But overall, I'm uh, happy that I was able to complete most of the tasks, and I will continue on to working on the unit testing, as that's all that's left. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, so overall, you are happy and just the challenges yes. persist but still they are doable yes i think so especially the slack community helps out a lot as we yeah. are sharing our problems and that kind of helps too so i'm hopeful we yeah. all over we will all overcome our challenges together wonderful thank you okay abraham <clears throat> hey Hello, Lynn. Hello? Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. All right, good morning. Good morning. Uh, all right. So, yeah, like uh, everybody said, it was uh, the title, the deadline was pretty much tight. So, yeah. Uh, the blockers for me were one was cutting up on things like Python, Pandas, and MacBook, uh, like the tools we were using. Uh, I've been seeing it's been long since I wrote or used Python, so it was kind of I was slacking behind catching up on or refreshing on knowledge. So resources on prerequisite uh, knowledge would have would have uh, helped if uh, they were there. Uh, another thing was I was trying to explore the data in the terminal for the curves. Uh, I think instead I should have used notebook or uh, something similar. So I was kind of struggling with the bug fixes because it kind of depends on what kind of data there is. So those are the two blockers for me. Yeah. What, what is your plan to address those blockers? Yeah, you know, for exploring the data, I think it's simple. It's using uh, Jupyter notebooks, I think. And for a like, cutting up on knowledge and refreshing on things, yeah, uh, yeah, it's still like reading things or doing a couple of challenges before 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 diving in the real challenge. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. Okay, but you know, just as a very general uh, rule of thumb uh, strategy, if something is you know, you have to plan, okay, you know what, how much task there is, right? Some are correlated, you can put them together and as one. And there is Friday, and then for every day there is a task, and then there is also Friday for everything. So you, you, you can plan, it's like, how far can you struggle on a particular task? For example, setting up your environment, whatever. And then of course, the, the most unknown element is that if you ask it and when you are waiting, how long does it take you, right? So because you, both are unknown, how long will it take you without asking to solve it? How long will it take you um, also like to ask it and, and to solve it? Because you know, there will be this and that, but you should really approach it like you must ask it first, let people give you feedback while at the same time you're working on it. And then if it's taking longer than some time, you pass to the next level so that you can at least, you know, wait somebody to help you while at least finishing some other task. I know the brain doesn't work that way, but a strategy is important. When overwhelm means when you, when you have, when you don't have a structure. So keep always just a certain structure for the day. 
uh, and also because you have like a long standing structure, which is the document of the, the week, but just for your day, structure it as well. So it's very important to not get overwhelmed uh, as well as also to cover as much ground as you can. This, this is just more a general one. Okay. Um, Talib. Uh, good morning, everyone. Morning. Um, yeah, uh, the, uh, just uh, because of most of the issues that I've been experiencing have been uh, spoken by my fellow trainees and that they have been solved. I just want to say uh, that uh, thank you for the resources about the unit test. Uh, that was a major challenge, but uh, we've been guided on how to go about it. So I'll be working on that today. And again, uh, it's been a great experience. Uh, though overwhelming, I have been sleeping less hours, but I'm trying to give my best. Uh, so that I can be able to continue learning. And wherever I have been having challenges, because, uh, earlier on I had challenges on uh, working with large files on GitHub, uh, but I reached out to uh, uh, my friends on, on, on Slack and I was able to be helped on that. So I'm so grateful. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Caleb. Martin. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we do. All right. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity. Um, there are many things that uh, I've gotten to learn as I've been working on the pro on the program. And probably maybe a challenge that I had come across when I was working on the GitHub was also that one for large files. But uh, I've posted the solution that uh, I was able to come across. It was in Stack Overflow. And it's uh, something that I would request uh, people to largely use also the, the Stack Overflow, uh, to use Stack Overflow resource. Uh, also, another thing is that um, I also had a question that I wanted to ask concerning the pushing of the code. When when you push the code, uh, you want maybe when you want to, to do the continuous integration, that is the GitHub actions. There are two places I'm seeing that it's uh, that people are reflecting is there's that one that is in the 10x uh, GitHub, uh, the, the, the Twitter analysis, the one that we fork the repository, and also there's the personal repository. So when the GitHub, when you are doing the continuous integration, uh, where should it reflect? It, it will be almost always. They will. There's, it's only just you. You get your code from the Ten Academy, but after that, every other task will be done in your case because you don't have even access to do it in our account. So it has to be done in your personal account. Oh, all right. Uh, no problem. Uh, otherwise, there is a lot that I've learned, and uh, I'm looking forward to the tasks for today and. Uh, I appreciate the effort that the tutors are putting in. Uh, also, I appreciate the effort that also other people are putting in in Slack to assist other people and to unblock other people from their challenges. Uh, I wish everybody the best uh, and uh, to have a good coding time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Martin. So um, just in the interest of time, we will only have now one. But if there's anything, everything should just move the discussion continues to um, slack. So I will give Jato. Yeah, uh, hi everyone, good morning. Hi, morning. Yeah, um, so I have a quite a lot of things I would like to discuss or ask. I'm sorry to take your time. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Ken Academy for this opportunity. It's been really great. Past few days has been really challenging and interesting as well. I've been learning a lot and in achieving a lot as well. Uh, I believe if I continue like this in less than a month, I might land my first job already. I mean, it's really interesting. Um, then I have I had a question yesterday on Slack for I got response which are not really clear. Um, I was asking about the the pull request. I don't know if I'm opportune to share my 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 screen. Well, I'll just explain it with my mouth. So maybe if you can, if you can get a grasp of what I'm trying to yeah. say. 
Yeah, so uh, on the pull request, I see um, learners' uh, pull requests are going under the base repository. That's the one, the one of code uh, of uh, 10 Academy. So I, from the instructions, I see that we was supposed to make a fork and I believe all the pull requests should go to our repository so that we can do the merging by ourselves. But, yes. uh, but yes. yeah, but for those pushing to the 10 academics repository, it means they won't have access, they won't be able to do the, the merging. It means the admin of the 10 yeah. uh, academics will, will have to merge their code into the base repository by himself. So I don't know if that's right or, or that, that, no, that's the it, it is, we, we noticed that people sometimes pull requests to the upstream, it's called. No, okay. but we are asking you to do the, the PR to yourself, exactly as you mentioned. It should just be right, to your own, uh, so All to right. your own main because, from the right, from so the fix whatever from a new branch to a main, or a right. back, so in your All own right. account. All right, because I was a bit getting scared when I saw everybody's name and my name wasn't under the progress no. under the base repository. I was beginning to get no. scared. All right, cool. We will only look yeah. the PR in your own, so we will never refer for any of the tasks, uh, whatever right. you have done or pull PR to our repository all the evaluation happens within your own space. Like exactly. you look at your activities, your PRs, your everything. All right, then, then lastly, I have an issue with uh, the unit testing as well, which is a simple one, but I don't know why it's getting hard to, to figure out. Um, it's around uh, imports, uh, importing the classes from uh, the extract, um, extract underscore clean file, um, on, uh, extract underscore data frame file. When I import the class, it shows that it's not in um, class. It's not found. The module I'm having a module error, and I, I think I've done everything well. But I, I believe this issue is, is due to the fact that I'm using Windows subsystems, and it has the whole path issues. So I've looked for other solutions to resolve that, to get OS dot get parts to get my five path, but it still persists. I don't know if there's a way around. I've reached out to somebody, to one of the um, one of the trainers, the technical trainers, uh, I think Musa, I'm hoping to get a response from him on Slack. Yeah, I think that's the usual way. I mean, you know, in some way, I'm just going to close it by that. In some way, uh, it's actually what you are experiencing is good, like, right? Because that's a, a daily routine everybody working is experiencing. So, yeah. for example, this imports, like, yeah, like, it's just sometimes just like that so you need to get exactly as you say sometimes you know the workaround i'm just even posting now just a simple like that if it is in the previous you know if it's a, you are now in the test you want to import sometimes git of course if you are importing it it needs to find so if it is in the previous folder sometimes the easiest is to add this kind of line on top of your test for example such that whenever you just import it it will work right so okay. i think it should uh, but these are great including right. even the the git the you know the large file thing you okay. deal yes. with it so so yeah, it yes. is actually a part of the it's just that yes. it shouldn't take to that much time so that you can spend another and you have to be you know strategic you have to have a strategy but these are all just real life problems. yeah so considering the 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 large files what i did in my own system is that i during my commits, I only commit the particular files I worked on. I'm not committing the whole folder again. Since I already have the zip folder from the from the from the data from the original uh, a, a repository online, when I make my changes in the uh, respective files, I just commit them particularly. Clearly, I don't commit the whole folder again. So whenever I want to use it again, I will still download it. I will still download. I will still come my repository and unzip it and then use it and then anything I push I only push the particular file so that's how actually I'm actually working my way around the yeah. large files issue then uh lastly what I want to get clarification on is uh, the github actions and the unit testing if we are able to do the unit testing now and we do the CI CD to run and see that every test is meets before making commit now what happens when we when we add when we've added new code to our to our code base, I was still going to write tests to include the new code writing or the or, or yeah. the new code writing or it. I mean, keep... in a, in a way, there are two elements to it. The task that is specified is at least at least for what is written is is there. But of course, every time you write new code, there has to be new test, right? But okay. it is, I think, it is a good habit, and as Arun said, this is the major element people need to get used to. It takes time, mm -hmm. 
So of course you yeah. have to balance between writing, you know, that and that. But but especially as we go on in the normal, like the kind of after after the evaluation week, uh, this thing will be much more and more important. But right now, <laughs> what is asked at least is that you understand uh, unit tests, you at least fix the unit test, and you run a, a few unit tests. And after that, you could you may not need to add unit tests to all of it, but at least yeah. all the what is existing runs as as required. All right, thank you so much. I said that every other thing is working fine. My CV, my presentation, everything was really awesome. I did a lot of work and have my, I really like the way my CV looks now. Thank you so much. Uh, cheers to everybody. Bye. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks. Thanks. Great. So we're going to, just in the interest of time, I mean, we are really, really took more time, uh, but I feel that is important. So we're going to close it anyway now. So uh, there is a tutorial right just after this, right? So you will have at least eight nine minutes you know seven minutes break um so cheers guys and i think we can i think we have a quick announcement every do you have an announcement yeah. or i can just go ahead